appreciate this question. It's an important question. Gyan, Moksha, Consciousness. What is the relation? Moksha is only a side effect. And a side effect for whom? For the equipment. Is there any moksha in consciousness? Is it consciousness that you have to liberate? Bondage. Hmm? You can call it suffering. Huh? Banda in Sanskrit huh? would be would stand here for dukkham, suffering. It's the same thing. The real bondage is a suffering. Because we are caught up in the fiction. So, banda, suffering of whom? Of the mind. But suffering is only in the mind. You can't find the suffering in consciousness, in your pure presence. You are free from suffering already. That freedom is already there. So when we say that true Gyan, liberation is reached, it's a way to speak because that complete liberation was ever there. That means there was never any Bandha, there was never suffering, like it is said in the Heart Sutra. You see, Lord Buddha said in the first noble truth, huh? Sarvam Dukkam, all is suffering. That is the greatest truth about the phenomenal world as it appears to the mind. Huh? So it's, it's fantastic, you see, that a being 2,500 years ago huh? proclaimed that and proclaimed the path that leads to the cessation of that suffering. It's fantastic, fantastic, just fantastic. Because that's our major problem, the suffering. So there is a liberation possible from suffering. But liberation of whom, of what? Not of consciousness that was ever free. So these concepts, suffering or bondage and liberation, do not apply to consciousness. They are irrelevant. They are relevant in relation with mind. So for the mind, when Gyan arises, huh, there is moksha. For the seeker, for the so-called individual being, there is a complete release. And that is the benefit, the major benefit of knowing oneself. Release from suffering forever. Is there anyone now that has been liberated? The mukta, huh? moksha, mukti, that are same thing. Mukta is the one who is free. Who is the mukta? Is there anyone now that stands free? No. Because gyan, in other words, means the realization that all there is is consciousness, that there was never an individual being existing by himself or herself. So that fiction of individuality, the personhood, now has dropped. So how would that per so-called person say, I am free? That person cannot be free because it is a non-existing entity. So therefore, in absolute terms, there is no Bandha and there is no Moksha. Hmm? These categories belong to the journey of the seeker, because the seeker starts from a place, usually, not always, from a place of suffering, incompleteness. And he knows already, by the age of, say, 20, 30, 
This is a nonsense life. So what I said the other day is that either you offer your life to make this world a better world uh, by helping, assisting so-called others. Uh, you offer your life for that. That would give the highest meaning to this life. Or, and that is not exclusive, and hmm, you find the truth. Because when you find the truth, this truth will set you free. This truth will liberate you once and forever. Jnana implies moksha of the non-existing entity. That entity is still there phenomenally. And they were suffering in that entity, so-called entity. And now there is liberation from that suffering. So that is a benefit, a local temporary benefit. So, Gyan is not a synonym of Moksha. It implies Moksha. But Gyan, when we say Gyan, we mean consciousness. Because Gyan means knowledge. But a knowledge in which there is no duality between a knower and that which is known. You cannot say, I know the Absolute. Only Absolute is and knows itself. That is the nature, the Swarupa of consciousness. So, Chit, which means absolute consciousness in Sat Chit Ananda, we can translate as consciousness, but also as knowledge. That absolute knowledge or knowingness of itself. Knowledge is complete. But all that we can say of knowledge is our experience of knowledge, which is always of a dualistic nature. But it's a knowledge that is absolute and indescribable. When you go into the higher samadhi, it is not a blank, empty space. It is not a blank void. It is a void full of presence of life, but not biological life. It is alive. So it knows itself and just drop the it and the itself. It is absolute knowledge. Because you say it knows itself again, so you are in the dualistic uh, scheme. Just drop it. It is absolute knowledge with no duality. So that is Gyan. And this Gyan is possible, is available while this physical, mental entity is around. And that is absolutely extraordinary. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Like, the absolute can be known. But don't think that it's true mind. It's not true mind. It is known. But that recognition doesn't have the intensity of a Samadhi experience, because this equipment cannot bear that intensity. That's why we go into that higher state. So, you see, this body-mind is well programmed that to, for the Absolute to be experienced, so to say, as it were, hmm, you cannot have that or go there, so to say again, through this equipment. You have to go in a higher state, a subtle state. Hmm? So in the same way, when Gyan is there, hmm, it's not with the intensity of a Samadhi experience, because you would not be able to live and communicate and interact. 
It's infinite. Yet, that knowledge is there. That means you know, and not philosophically, not conceptually, what you are, but you cannot put into words. If you want to put into words, then you have to use the right terminology, Advaita Vedanta, Dzogchen, Mahamudra, Tao. Hmm? It is there. Hmm? So therefore, in the tradition, after Shankaracharya, they have made a distinction between Jivan Mukti and Videha Mukti. Mukti means moksha. Hmm? Jivan Mukti while you are alive. And Videha Mukti, Videha without body, liberation without body, after the body is dropped. Because after the body is dropped, that is the same like in the Samadhi experience. In Samadhi, you are not in the body. You are not in the body. So, it is as if, but again, huh, this is all an approximation with our language. You enter in the eternal Nirvikalpa Samadhi. That's called Kevalya Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And when that is experienced while alive, hmm, that is called Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So there's a difference in the intensity because the body-mind cannot bear that. So, and yet it is absolutely amazing. So the dream, the fiction of being someone has totally dropped. And all you see and experience is that one Reality beyond words. Hmm? Hmm? So, Gyan and consciousness, you can say, are pointing to the same. You call it consciousness, or you call it Gyan, same. Because what is the nature of Gyan is consciousness. Vidya, that is an accumulation of concepts, uh, mental, intellectual understanding. 